One of the most popular book in China is The Art of War by Sun Tzu. Sun Tzu himself is a very capable soldier and military advisor in history. When attacking the Chu state in 506 BC, he used 13,000 people to defeat 200,000 people. Sun Tzu was born around 500 BC, which is called the Axel Age. Great spiritual teachers have emerged from all civilizations in that era. Ancient Greece with Socrates, Plato, Aristotle, the Druze prophets, ancient India with Bakamuni, and China with Confucius and Laozi. The wisdom in this book, The Art of War, is also widely applicable in the modern life, which includes strategy, game theory, also the wisdom in people interactions. You know, war is also between people to people in a very extreme situation. We can put the wisdom into business and trade. As we said, business field can be like a battlefield. Moreover, we even can put the wisdom into our daily life and enhance a healthy relationship. This book itself is very condensed, as we see. It contains very little stories. More of the content is the strategies. You can read it through in half an hour to one hour. Also, I got this book from Amazon, which is about $5. In this book, it has 13 chapters. Laying plans, wedding war, attacked by stratagem, tactical dispositions, energy, weak point and strong, maneuvering, variation in tactics, the army of the march, terrain, the night nice situations, the attack by fire, and the use of spies. There are mainly three principles in the art of war, which is also widely applicable in the modern life. Let's talk about it. The first principle is 知己知彼,百战不殆. In short, we can say do complete analysis, but it contains more of it. Literally, this word means knowing ourselves and knowing others. Even battle hundreds of times, we will never lose. In the modern life, we should also do competitor analysis thoroughly. There are two more implicit meanings in this word, and let's talk about it. For the first word, 知己知彼, that's mean know ourselves and know others. But on the contrary, we don't want our counterparties to know ourselves very well. In the last chapter of this book, it's talk about using spice, which is a very interesting chapter. There are mainly five types of spice. The first is local spice, Indian. That means we hire the local people from other country, from the country of our counterparties. So they can help us to gather the information, which is easy, which is hard to detect, and which is less expensive. But at the same time, they can't get the most vital information or the most accurate information. The next type of spice is called Indian inward spice. We hire the important people, such as people in the government in another country. They can help us to gather the important information. The third type is converted spice, fanjian. That's when the counterparty country sends spice to our country. We catch them and make them to work for us. So they can gather information for us. They can also spread the fake information to another country, to our counterparties. The fourth type is called doomed spice, sijian. We hired our local people and sent them to the enemies. They were in charge of spreading the fake information there. But why they call the Sijian Dune Spice, or to say the dead spice, literally. That means when they are catched by our counterparties, they need to kill themselves. And the fifth one, also the hardest one, that's called Shengjian, which is the surviving spice. That's also we hired our local people and sent them to the counterparties. They are not only in charge of spreading the fake information, but also they need to gather information from another country and take it back. So it's a very hard process. And similar to the Dune Spice, when they were caught by the counterparties, they also need to kill themselves. So let's move back to this word 知己知彼,百战不殆. The second word is 百战不殆, which means we fight for hundreds of times, we never lose. Well, Sun Tzu used never lose instead of win. So you see, the most important thing is not to win, but not lose. There are hundreds of enemies and we can win for hundreds of times, but once we lose, we lose everything. This is Sun Tzu's wisdom. If we find our counterparty a stronger too, we should definitely avoid war, especially avoid to compete with them in their strong point. This is also very applicable in the modern life. For example, if you are a small phone manufacturer and want to enter the industry, there are companies who can provide good CPU, and also large companies, they can provide a good screen. But for you, your strategy, you are not necessarily need to compete them with the strong point. It might be a wiser choice if you just choose to have. Maybe you can choose other points, such as you can build phones with better camera, better voice, and cheaper price. Another very extreme situation when you are in a war, it's even better to flee away than to fire for a scarce possibility to win. 
because the war itself is always a big consumption for both parties. It's not the best choice. It's also applicable in a relationship. We know about others. We learn about others. That doesn't mean we want to beat them, but it's more like we want to respect them more, avoid the misunderstandings, and create a win-win situation. The next principle we can talk about is 不战而屈人之兵 In short, we can say avoid an unnecessary battle. It doesn't mean we should not battle, but it's more like we should avoid the unnecessary battle. Sun Tzu also says, 百战百胜，非善之善者也。不战而屈人之兵，善之善者也。It is not the best to win every battle, but win without any battle is the top choice. Even if we win for every war, we need to pay for it in every war. In Sun Tzu's reason, battle is always the last choice we should consider. Well, it is generally a better idea to solve it peacefully, as Sun Tzu says. 上兵伐谋，其次伐交，其次伐兵，其下攻城。The first two sentences talk about to solve problem peacefully. Well, people will battle, but they are not battle for the battle itself, but they are for other aims. Well, the solution should be solving the aims instead of winning the battle. When we are in a very dense situation, we don't necessarily need to think about how to fight back. It's a wiser way to think about it in a slightly bigger picture. What their aims are, can we solve it peacefully, or can we find a middle point? This is what 上兵伐谋 means. And the next sentence, 其次伐交 We can destroy the opportunity to start a battle for others. For example, we should protect ourselves very well. We can build very high city wall, so which is very hard to start a battle. It's also applicable in the modern society. For example, you can build up your professionalism. The last two sentences, 其次发兵，其下攻城 That means we need to start the war very carefully. 其次发兵 That means it's not a very good option to start a battle directly.、Mm, this is not the worst. Well, the worst is 其下攻城 That means to attack others' territory or start a war inside others' territory. That's because others know the situation better. They have more resources, more networking inside their territory. It's not easy for you to win. Well, in Sun Tzu's wisdom, he also says the situation of being enemies is temporary. Enemies will not be enemies all the time. They can be converted. They can be transferred. Well, you can treat others as enemies. You fight back. You even win. So what? There will be countless of enemies in the world. The other way, where Sun Tzu also recommended, is to convert them into team members, into friends. You can enlarge your troops and stabilize your situations. Even if you are inside the war, it's also a better way to stop the war quickly. For example, instead of ruining others' troop and vehicle, we can also think about turning those resources into ourselves. Well, let's talk about the third principle: is 兵者诡道也 which means warfare are based on deception. This talk about when we are in an extreme situation, we have to have a war. This is the last choice, and I will also talk about it more briefly. 兵者诡道也 simply saying it means you need to conceal your strength and guide the misjudgment. Well, in Sun Tzu's word, he said, 不能而视之不能，用而视之不用，近而视之远，远而视之近 In English, it is when able to attack, we must seem unable. When using our forces, we must seem inactive. When we are near, we must make the enemy believe we are far away. Well, when we are far away, we must make them believe that we are nearby. He also talked about 攻其无备，出其不意 We should attack when they are unprepared and also appear when they are not expected. In the last chapter, Sun Tzu also talked about using spies. That's like conceal our own screens, spread fake information. Well, at the same time, we study the counterpart as well. So this is the third principle: warfare are based on deception. Well, Sun Tzu also talked about the specific strategy of war inside this. I will not talk about the detail in this video. If you are interested, feel free to search on Amazon or check the link below for this book. So now I have a question to ask you. There is also another very famous book about war, which is called On War. This book. Well, in this book, they have a principle. Like attacking is the best way to defense. But in the art of war book in Sun Tzu, it seems like he holds a contrary opinion. Well, he is like starting the war is the last choice. To be honest, I also get kind of confused. So how do you think about those two opinions? Comment down below and let me know. If you want to book any service from me for the language, business, and culture, you can check on the link below. I can provide consultation call, translations, blog posts, and also advertisements. Professional voiceover in Chinese and Cantonese, and also marketing in China. Feel free to also subscribe, and I will see you again soon.